What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Zay, and welcome back to Setup Sunday. So today, we're going to go off script a little bit, right? I'm going to get back to the roots of the channel and get back to sharing my journey, my process of how I do things. So today, what I want to share with you guys is how I use unusual options activity to find good trade setups. Now, that doesn't mean to go ahead and use it every single time, but it's just a process or method that I use. So I want to give you guys some insight into what it actually looks like. So if you like what you hear, you definitely want to stick around and watch the entire video. Now, before we get into it, of course, I need you guys to go ahead and like this video as well as subscribe to the channel so we can continue to get this content out to other first generation wealth builders. So, like I said, strap in and let's get right to it. All right, fam. So step number one, right? Now, what I like to do is I like to use uh, bar charts, unusual options, activity scanner. Now, there's a couple of scanners out there that you guys can use. Uh, Finviz has one that you can uh, use, you know, to do option screener as well as uh, depending on the broker you use. Like I know E-Trade has a tool where they have an option screener as well. But for me personally, I like to use bar chart. Uh, they make it relatively easy. So the first step that I like to do uh, when I'm going to look for unusual op options activity to kind of you know, figure out a trade or maybe find a trade. Um, so the first thing you want to do is just go to bar chart, right? So you go to barchart.com. And if you don't know on their home screen, all you got to do is if you scroll down to the bottom, towards the bottom, they have this right here, unusual options activity, right? Now, let me just put a caveat. When I'm using this process, I typically do this over the weekend because I want to see what was Friday's activity going into the following week or preceding week. So I just want to put that out there. So if you know, you're going to try to um, mirror this process or implement it yourself, it's always good to do it over the weekend. That's when most of your good trades are found over the weekend. You can see the market clearly. You have time to take a step back. You can assess you know, things that have happened this past, the prior week things that are coming or happen over the weekend to really get yourself prepared. So um, I want to put that out there that, hey, I like to do this over the weekend. So it's a, usually a, a weekend process. Now, once I get to this unusual options activity tab, what I'm going to go ahead and do is you're going to want to click on the full list. So you want to see the full list. So there's a couple of things that I'm looking for personally when I go uh, and do this list. So number one is um, I'm definitely searching by volume. So I'm looking for something that has gotten a, you know, just a high amount of volume on a Friday, right? So clearly investors know something because they poured a lot of money into it. The next thing, so, you know, you want to go ahead and sort your volume so you can have what was the highest contract flows or what got a lot of volume, right? Then the next thing I'm going to really pay attention to is this DTE. So this is days till expiration. Now, depending on the type of trader you are, this is going to be big because as we go through this list, you'll start to see like some of them are 21 days, some are zero days, meaning, hey, the expiration has already passed, so you can't really even use them. And then you have like seven days, which would technically be like a weekly trade, right? Now, what I'm looking for is I tend to look for the seven days, right? I want to see a weekly trade, but then I like to also find those little outlayers where maybe... Uh, as we go through this list, you can see this one has 49 days. This has 84 days. So I'm looking for, OK, what are some tickers or contracts that have a lot of flow that also have time? Because I want to be able to do additional analysis or research on it to see, does it make sense? Right. So as I'm going through this uh, list, right, the, the, the third criteria that I'll be paying attention to is the actual company or ticker, right? So what I want to try to do is find like that diamond in the rough, right? Because as we look at this list, you can see, okay, NVIDIA is a big dog. You got this BBIG and you can just see BBIG. There's a lot of contract flow because it's consistently popping up. Same thing with NVIDIA and Apple and Tesla, like and AMD. Those are the big dogs, right? So a lot of people are going to be trading those and we kind of know that. So as I look at this list and I'm looking at this high volume, I'm looking at DTE, DTE days till expiration, as well as symbols or ticker symbols, I want to find those outliers, right? So the first thing that pops out of me is Ford, right? I see Ford is at the top of this list. You got all these, these big dogs, but then you got a little old Ford right here. And as you can see, it's a seven-day DTE, so it's a weekly because the contract expires September 3rd. And they got a 1350 call. And on Friday, this uh, contract has 66,000 
in volume. So 66,000 contracts were traded and it's only 14 cents a contract. So that sticks out to me. It's like, OK, there there's a pretty big bet going on for Ford uh, coming into next week. And it caught my attention. Right. So first thing is I'll write that down. Ford nine, three, uh, 1350 call, because when we get into the later steps, you'll see why. Right. So that's one ticker that I found. Right. So that's a list. And usually with this list, I'll pick about anywhere from three to five that I want to focus on because you want to have a focus list. Right. You don't want to be scrambling. So I'll have a focus list. So number one is four. Right. So I'm going to write this down. I'm going to look into this contract. Um, and then as I continue to scroll down, it's like I'm looking, we see some more. So I'm, I'm looking at the days and the next one that kind of pops out to me is uh, this one, hut. Right. So I haven't seen this ticker a lot um, within these. these. And then the next thing I could see is, OK, it's a 917. So it's got 21 days and it had 23000 volume on Friday. Now, if you don't know what HUT is, it's actually a Bitcoin mining company. So it starts to make sense. So that's another thing as I'm looking through this list, I'm asking myself and thinking about why would these uh, tickers show up on unusual options activity? And we'll get back to Ford in a second. But for HUT, I do know that's a Bitcoin mining uh, yeah, company. And so currently the price is $7. They're going for a $10 call, 23,000 contracts at 51 cents. So again, that's another thing or ticker that sticks out to me as far as flow. So I would write that one down. So now I have two that I need to do some additional research on Ford and Hut. All right. Now, as I'm scrolling down, the next one that sticks out to me is this PBR. Now, PBR is uh, it's a Brazil uh, petroleum company. So oil. Right. Um, and that sticks out because the current price is eleven dollars and twenty one cent. But it calls for eleven dollars. It goes all the way out until uh april of 2022 so you got a lot of time and look at that contract flow Twenty two thousand contracts when they had an open interest of only 2100 so somebody's coming in and making a big bet on brazil oil or brazil petroleum right so that's number three right so pbr is another um ticker or this contract kind of sticks out to me and so let's just stop there right so i have three potential unusual art options, activity plays or uh, trades that I can, you know, I need to do further research on, right? So that takes me to uh, step two. So step two is once I have my list of unusual ap options activity, well, the next thing I want to do is actually, let's go look at the technicals, right? Let's see how does this line up with what we see um, and within this activity. So I'm going to go back to forward, right? So for Ford, this contract here was for $13.50 for Friday. So um, let's go ahead and pull up the chart on Ford, and then we're going to discuss Ford's chart and go through, okay, what does this uh, activity look like? Okay, so now we are looking at Ford's chart. Now, this is a weekly chart, and we can see that last week, Ford was up 5.8%, right? So it was went up $0.74, cents, so it uh, had a low of $12.47, and it closed the week at $13 dollars and 31 cent now based on our ta we can see that hey this is at a key level right we can see that last time it closed here it did a quick little pullback but then at the end of the week it ended at 14 dollars and 54 cent so this actually shows us that hey ford is under our 20-day moving average on a weekly chart and it just uh finished somewhat of a correction right so we have our three black crows if you want to consider that but you can see three down weeks, you get a bounce, right? So then three down weeks and you get a bounce. So if it follows this trend, more than likely we can get another bounce, right? And so now it's like, okay, I'm starting to see what they see. Why, you know, I'm starting to see why they had unusual options activity. The next thing that I do want to point out, and this goes to like somewhat of the fundamental cases, why would uh, investors be one willing to take a big bet on Ford uh, coming into this week? Well, one another thing that sticks out by doing additional research is that I know Rivian is set to IPO. Now, Rivian is going to be a company that specializes in EV, SUVs, and pickups, right? Now, they are about to IPO with like a 70 to $80 billion valuation. Now, if we compare that to Ford, who's already producing vehicles, and they're going to somewhat be in that lane of producing an F-150 uh, EV vehicle, 
you can assume that, hey, people are saying or investors are thinking if Rivian can command this type of valuation, what does that do for Ford if they are going to be a competitor in that EV, in that space of SUVs and F-150s? And they only currently have a market cap of $53 billion. So that means a company that hasn't even sold a vehicle yet has a valuation of damn near $30 billion more than a company that is actually producing vehicles, right? So that's something that is to take in mind. Okay, I see why, you know, somebody might be willing to bet on Ford because if Rivian can come in this type of valuation, what does that do for Ford, All right? It could be a boost. So that's another thing to just kind of like, you know, having your mind when you're processing, okay, why does this trade make sense? Like, what is the catalyst uh, for this trade? So we uh, are looking at the chart. So now let's go ahead and dig down into our daily chart to see like, what is, does this make sense? So if we go down to our daily chart, we can see again, this is a key level. It bounced off support at 1236, which is right here. And as you can see, now we've got some upward momentum and we're back at this key level where last time Ford took off, right? So back in early May, Ford got a lot of, uh, you know, exposure and, you know, the president was hyping them up and they had the F-150 come out and all that good stuff. And it went on a nice little run and it went all the way up to about, uh, it hit a high of 1632, uh, actually went a little bit higher, uh, went a high as 1645, right? So again, I'm just looking and doing research and collecting data, walking you guys through the process. So now, again, let's get back to that unusual options activity saw. It was for a 9-3, 1350 call. So 93 is that the end of this week. That's Friday. So what I would go ahead and do is take a vertical line and put it here. This tells me that's when this contract ends. And the the, the strike price, and I'm going to use a horizontal line for that, is 1350, which would be right about there. Now, when we see this, it's pretty clear that okay, we have the 20-day moving average here. We have our 50-day here, which is at right at 1360. So now again, it's starting to make more sense, right? Connecting the dots. So it's like, okay, do I believe next week that Ford could potentially get to 1350? I think so. Is it? I mean, it, it. You know, once we when we bounced here last time, then very next day. On the July 20th, we opened at 1337 and we end up closing all the way at 1396. So it's very, very possible that four could do 63 cents in a day, which would be 4%, right? Um, and that's another thing to keep in mind is what is the average true range of the stock that you're looking at? Ford doesn't have big movements. So if you're looking for strikes, you shouldn't go too far out because, you know, it's, it's not realistic for Ford to go from $13.30 to $15 in a day. It just doesn't move that fast. So again, the $13.50 is making more sense, right? So it's like, okay, we evaluated in the chart. We can see that, hey, it has room to even maybe push to $14. So now, again, it's making sense, right? The trade is starting to come together. It's like, okay, I can see this getting to $13.50, right? So now that we've done our technical analysis and we have, you know, kind of thought of, okay, why, what are some potential catalysts? Like, why are they even looking at this trade? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to that options chart and then we're going to actually study the options chart to see like what's a good entry price and what is a potential good exit price based on the uh, options history. So we're going to get into that next. All right, family. So we're now back. And so we're back at bar chart and we're back on this unusual options activity. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click these little three dots. We're going to go to options chart. So it's going to pull up the Ford September 3rd, 1350 call. And what we're going to do now is actually study the history of this contract, right? So this options chart here shows us, you know, the history in the price action of this option. So you can see this option actually reached a high of $1.60 back on July 29th, right? So this contract has the potential to go back up to at least $1.60. If not, I would look more like right here, which is this level of $1.20, um, because this is uh, pretty much the low for that high of that day. So um, now that we have kind of looked at this chart, we can see like, hey, OK, this is a pretty decent price. And let me just refresh this real quick, just so we can kind of get a feel for what does that price actually look like? So if I zoom or squinch this down, you can see a good price is probably around eight cent is where you, you know, if you really could have got it for the low ski, you would have wanted to catch it around eight cent, 10 cent. 
But the biggest thing I also want to point out to you is look at how it was relatively low volume leading up. And then we had this big spike in volume, 66,000, right? And the price barely moved. So that means a lot of people were buying this contract in anticipation that it's going to go up. So you can see and trust the way I'm looking at these candlesticks, it works the same way when you're looking at these option charts as far as like gaps get filled. So you can see to the upside, there's a gap to about 39 cent. You got one here at 45 cent. So these are reasonable targets for you can that you can aim for. And then you have a lot of upside up here to about a dollar, right? So the last part that I like to do uh, in bringing this, this all together is I'll use the options profit calculator again to really help me understand okay what is you know what is a realistic target for me to set um, my exit at right so let's go to that last part so let's go to the options profit calculator so now i have some history so it's like okay i am comfortable paying the 14 cent or trying to get it for 15 cent and now i need to see like okay if ford does certain price movement during next week what would my potential profit be looking like so we're going to go to options profit calculator and we're going to go to the long call bullish and we're going to go forward. Hopefully you got, I'm going to zoom in just so y'all can see that a little better. Uh, so forward, we're going to do, I believe the option that they had us looking at. Let's see, now I got to zoom out so I can. All right, there we go. Jeez Louise. Okay, so September 3rd, 13.50, 14 cent. And let's say you wanted to do 50 contracts, right? So 700 bucks is what you're going to risk on a trade. Uh, and then we know the range. So if we go back to Ford and let's look at the weekly chart, I would say that the range for Ford is that we could probably see it go as high as $14 next week. So that I wouldn't be aiming for it to go no higher than $14, right? So if we go here, we'll say 13 to $14 is the range and boom, right? So this is going to give us a little bit of information. So if we look at next week and we get it for the price of 14 cent, and let's just say that Ford does ultimately on Friday, get to 13 say 1375 right this is 1375 well the contract would now be 25 cent and you'd have a profit of about 550 dollars roughly 78 percent now let's say it gets to 1375 on monday and now monday i believe is the 31st yes no i'm sorry it's the 30th so if it say um Ford has a good day and it goes up 3% in a day and it gets to three, you know, 13.75. Well, that contract actually is going to be 34 cent and you'd make a profit of about $1,000 and you'd have, that'd be about roughly 143%. Now here's another cool thing that you can do. And then I'm going to walk you guys through again. So now that I have some realistic, like, okay, if it gets to 13.75, I can set my sale price at about 34 cent. And all of this, I can automate. <clears throat> That's why I'm doing this, the homework ahead of time. So I was like, okay, let me set my buy price at 14, 15 cent. Hopefully I get filled. And then I'm going to set a sell price of 35 cent for maybe the first 25 contracts to secure some profit, right? Now to ask yourself, okay, can I think, or do I think this contract can realistically get back to 34 cent? Well, check this out, right? What we can do is let's go back to bar chart and let's go back to the options chart history to see, is it realistic, right? So 34 cent is what we're looking for. So let's go back to this four chart. And again, we're looking at this contract history for the September 3rd, right? September 3rd, 1350. And the sale price we had was 34 cent. Now, look at that. I think I had mentioned there was a gap here at 38 cent. So it shows us like, okay, it does like a line, like, yo, if four goes to 1375, I can see this contract going to 34 cent because it was there just on the 16th of August 16th. This contract was just going for between 43 cent and 39 cent. So it is realistic for this to happen, especially when you have 
such big buyers volume come in, they can realistically push this thing up to about 38, 34 cents. So that does align. So that's a good target for me to write that down. Okay, hey, when four gets to 13.75, contract should be roughly 38 to 34 cents. I can look to sell half of my contracts at that given value. And then I can leave some runners because if we go back to our options profit calculator and say uh, for some you know, good reason Ford decides to run the $14. And if it gets there, you know, say Thursday or Friday, you can see that this contract would then be 50 cent. And that would be a profit of about 257%. So you'd be netting about $1,800. And if it goes on Monday or Tuesday, you can see the profit is 53 cent and 54 cents. So roughly we're looking for the contract to go to about 55 cent. So let's go back to the bar chart and ask ourselves, is 55 cent realistic? And it definitely is. So let me refresh from the time because bar chart be tripping. But as we go through and look at that, right? So there's another gap at 46 cent. And then there, here it is, 54 cent. This is where we closed on August 4th. So could we realistically see it get back to this 54 cent? Yes, we can, because it consolidated before in this area. And it could be looking to, you know, go back up to this area um, for, you know, potential profit. So, again, it does line up. So we know that, hey, 55 cent is realistic. Um, so now I have some potential another price target. So I'll sell some at the 35, 38 cent. And then I have some runners that I want to try to sell at 55 cent. And after doing all of that, right, and putting that, that plan together, okay, I went through the profit calculator, I've done my technical analysis, I've thought about, okay, what are the potential calories for this, for this short-term trade, um, and it all aligns, right, so I like it. So this would be a contender for me for one of my trades for the week. Now, again, like I said, you want to have a very focused list, and so what I would do is I would just repeat this process uh, and go back to um, bar chart. So the same exact process that I just walked through, I will go back to the unusual options. I hit full list. And then I would go through this list. And then remember, you got to sort it by volume. Um, and then once you do that, again, I'm going to go look for those, you know, off brand tickers and pretty much do the same thing, right? So like the next one that I would probably look at uh, based on volume and that sticks out to me um, is like I said, this hut one, right? So then I would go through, do the TA, um, ask the fundamental questions of why would there be, you know, some hype behind this. And then again, I would evaluate what's the risk reward and kind of do those same steps that I just uh, did previously with Ford. So once you've done all of that and put that together, it's just a matter of executing, right? So now when Monday comes, you have your entire trading plan in place, you know, where to enter, you know, where to exit, you have the proper, um, you know, catalyst that you that you know. Um, and then the last thing that I would say is definitely set a stop loss, right? So when you're looking at a stop loss, you would do the same thing. Look at that, that, that options history and say, look, if the contract goes below this price, then I know it's probably gonna keep dropping. So let me just exit here. Um, and ultimately that's my process that I use for, um, you know, finding trades via unusual options activity. Literally, that is the steps that I will go through. Um, you guys can practice that. Take a look. Um, definitely comment below what you think about the process, what you might add to it, what you might do a little bit differently. Uh, we'd love to get some feedback, but hopefully this is helpful when it comes to using, using unusual options activity to maybe not even find trades, just get an understanding of what's going on in the market. Where's money moving, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So again, hopefully that was super helpful and insightful, guys. Uh, again, I'm going to get back to doing more of these type of videos and not just the standard, let's look at the market every week, because honestly, um, that was getting a little boring for me. And I want to get back to, you know, doing things that are creative and showing uh, people how to use different tools uh, and eventually they can kind of create their own processes. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to press that like button and as usual, stay blessed. And I catch you guys next Sunday. Peace out. Run it up, run it up, run it up. We out for generational wealth, who else but us? Run it up, run it up, run it up. This is first gen wealth.